the grand finale of You can just imagine what my cast is feeling right now after being in this room, stuck with me, in prison for the last three months to get to tonight. So, if you want to show your appreciation, you know how to do that. Okay, welcome. This is our last, last and closing night. I just want to uh, ask you to all indulge us at the end of the show. The cast will have a brief closing ceremony and acknowledgments. It'll take a couple of minutes. So leave, be nice, help us out here. These people have waited a long time. A word about Hillel. Hillel is the center of, of uh, informal education here. The campus of the university. They do wonderful, wonderful things here. One particular activity I want to make note of, and maybe you can be part of it. It's called Geberit and Salim, and it's a senior citizens program that happens every Friday in the Shuk. When people associated with Hillel go out into the Shuk and help elderly with their shopping for Shabbat, with shopping and drinking and taking them home and back again and all that business, obviously there's a certain amount of expenses involved. And if you'd like to be part of this unusual act of chesed, at the end of tonight's final performance, two of our actors will be marching around the building with a kind of heart-shaped looking boxes, and if you can contribute a bit to part of that, you will be performing a huge act of chesed, and we say thank you in advance. About our show. Our show is in two acts, each approximately an hour long, with a ten-minute intermission. You know all the rules. Please, when I finish with this whole business, please close your phone, keep it closed, don't film, no photography, don't play with the phone, don't do anything with the phone, it just gets in the way. Secondly, especially for the people who are shorter than I am in this room, there are a couple of you, there's no food, no baba, no potato chips, none of that, you can drink water, but please leave the food out of the show because you can hear it and it's very, very disturbing. Okay? Some people, there are 26 people who are about to perform their last performance. And we have some acknowledgments we'd like to make around the corner. Some people who are here, literally because it's the last night. First of all, the gentleman who for the last dozen years has overseen our lighting and set design. Wait till you see some of the things he's going to do tonight. Would you say thank you to Ruben Lightwish? <laughs> we will see beautiful dancing in the show. Thank you to Adina Feldman. very hard for the next two hours. <laughs> I think I'm going to really like this audience. Okay. Our percussionist, Asab Kasimov. Our trumpeteer, Joad Baslin. She is here for her sixth show. And believe me, I know exactly why I invite her every single season to play with us. You're going to find out in a few minutes how smart I am. Would you welcome <laughs> Esther Bajalini? <laughs> and the controls of our whole musical adventure tonight, Chaim took the seat. <laughs> May I say a word about the black chairs, okay? They're really there, we're pretty much sold out. They're there because we don't want to have you stand up in the middle and have an entire row to stand up because somebody wants one seat. But I am going to ask you, since there is a serious amount of activity on the cast along the staircases, if you're sitting in a black chair, stay in that chair and don't move it to the right or the left because you're just going to cause a lot of unnecessary discomfort. Okay. Tradition here in Hillel says that we always combine the Tar Torah with the theme of our show. You're going to say Cinderella. Oh, by the way, I have to tell you something. This is an adult show. This is not the Cinderella we grew up with. Not even close. You're going to go, what? You're going to find out how correct I am. This is the Rodgers and Hammerstein version. Not the Disney version. We don't like Disney anyway. Anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, show you exactly how that's done. We turn to the senior member of the Best Hill Theatre Workshop. Tonight, appearing in his 17th production in 14 years. 
Raise your hand if you've been here before. Well, then you're going to recognize the guy who's going to work out here. Would you welcome Brian Friedland? shows up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Chagarim Sameach, and welcome to a first at Hillel, the grand finale, Israel's first ever production of Rodgers and Hammerstein's glorious fantasy, Cinderella. <laughs> oh, good, you're all awake. Okay, by show of hands, how many of you have kids, grandkids? Yeah, that's what I thought. So if you have kids, you probably experience most of the normal emotions triggered by parenting. Joy, pride, frustration, helplessness, adoration, panic, rage. Parenting is an intense experience that provokes the full range of human reactions. But parents usually feel one consistent emotion above all else, love. Love helps parents ride out the tough times. But what happens when you're raising a stepchild? Are you still protected by that instinctive, irrational, deeper-than-deep love for the child? Not necessarily. It is, a po it is possible for a deep flow of parental love to emanate from a non-biological parent, but it's not a given. Especially so when raising a child who isn't an infant. The Torah tells us, We must love our neighbors as ourselves. Doing actions that demonstrate love is within reach, no matter how you feel emotionally. When raising a stepchild, this mitzvah can be performed all day. While feeling a natural parental love may be out of reach, fulfilling the mitzvah of showing love to the child is definitely within reach. A step-parent can act kindly towards a youngster no matter how he or she feels about the child. But not so was the case of our Cinderella. It took a fairy godmother and a prince to change her life and guarantee her future. She was lucky she had lived in a fairy tale. <laughs> And she ended up marrying someone who showed her compassion the minute he saw her. The real world, however, doesn't always work that way, and the happily ever after end ending is far from guaranteed. This is our 32nd year of Hillel Productions, and our sixth in the newly renovated Rachel Simon Hillel Theater. This year, thanks again to the Simon family, we are inaugurating a new backstage and dressing area. Take my word for it, it is fabulous. again to the Simon family. Our production of Cinderella was taken from the most recent 2013 new Broadway version, so don't be surprised that the storylines in our production don't quite match with the memories of the show you grew up with. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it's time to meet the Wicked Madame, the Three Stepsisters, Crazy Marie, Sebastian, Jean-Michel, the Prince, and our fairy tale heroine, Cinderella. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sebastian, I know. And I guess I'm ready to be a king. The thing of it is, I just don't even know who I am yet. I'm sure it'll come to you. Until then, might I suggest faking it? Really? You wouldn't be the first and you wouldn't be the last. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, to the castle. Uh, to the castle. These questions just nag me. Nag. Nag. I just wonder. Me, who am I, a far from perfect guy? A bum who wants to do what's right, but always does what's wrong. A kid whose voice is way off key, but loves to sing a song. A guy who dreams like a lion, but wakes up like a lamb. Me, who am I, but the guy I Be 
careful, my lord. Many of the poor have weapons. Be gone with you. No, good sirs, that is merely crazy Marie. She lives in the woods and comes to town only to gather what others throw away. She is gentle in every way, sweet and delicate, but nuts. <laughs> she is harmless, I can tell. Gentlemen, sheath your swords. You're a good friend to Marie. She is very lucky to have a true friend such as you. I wish I had a true friend in this world. I'm standing right here. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, shall we continue on? Onward home, sir. Up, up, and away. Very well, Finkelman. Uh, it's, it's Lord Finkelton, sir. <laughs> very well, Finkelton. Be well, young lady. I don't want charity. Then take it as a present, in admiration for a true friend in this world. Thank you, dear Ella, for saving my life. I shall return the favor. I didn't do it to have a favor returned. I have a shawl here that only has a few holes and smells of cabbage. You can wear it. <laughs> Not necessary. Oh, what a handsome man that was. And so sweet and generous. And that is not merely a man. <laughs> that is Prince Christopher, the slayer of giants and dragons. He has just returned to us from universities to be crowned king, you know. That man, a world leader, but he appears to have a heart, mind, mind and soul. It can't be. Marie, you're crazy. <laughs> yes, I am. But that does not change the fact that he is our own Prince Christopher and he has returned to become our ruler. Look at your coin, dear. Well, it is him. From the left. Such silly ears. <laughs> and the crown doesn't help things. He should wear a floppy hat. <laughs> Here, Marie. Take this coin. Buy yourself something warm to eat. Why is it always the very poor who are the most generous? It breaks my heart. Oh, here's our Jean Michel. He shall spell gibberish now and for us. Be nice. <laughs> Good day, Jean-Michel. Oh, a good day, Ella, a crazy Marie. Uh, and do you know why it is the very poor who are the most kind? No, but I'm sure you're going to tell us. Because it is a corrupt system with a smashed moral compass. You will forgive me if I'll just stagger around and mutter. <laughs> Today I will be going alone to the castle to protest the corruption that riddles our government. You must come with me. Cinderella! That is Madame Ella's stepmother. That shall shout to the prince. He will have no choice but to listen. Cinderella! I have a vision of what this kingdom could be! Cinderella, help us with our parcels this instant! Oh, Cinderella, lazy stepdaughter, help me with my package! Careful! Careful! <laughs> no one appreciates the extreme tortures I am subjected to. <laughs> I'm ignoring that. Charlotte, Abigail, Gabrielle, come, daughters, come. We are here, Mama. We are exhausted being as beautiful as we were. Mama, do you think I'm as beautiful as Charlotte is? I want to be just like her. Oh, shut up, Abigail. Cinderella, help your stepsisters with their shrewd purchases. Into the house, daughters. The real ones. Madame isn't always terrible. Sometimes she sleeps. <laughs> Look, Gabrielle, it's your new friend. What's his name again? Bet I know why he's here. <laughs> Gabrielle. Oh, I have a, a brought from university a book for you uh, with pictures of how people in other lands live, uh, Norway, Italy, uh, Japan, and how they govern. Here, you can see for yourself. I have mentioned my interest in these places only in passing, and you've brought a whole book? Quit it, you. <laughs> and four days from now, I should like to take you on a date. I'm organizing a soup kitchen, and we need someone to stir and lay Gabrielle, and... do not talk to that man. We are teetering precariously between upper middle class and lower upper class. We cannot be seen talking to a revolutionary. Into this house at once. Why do I care? Why do I try? I'll never be good enough for her. I might as well take this book and burn it. Oh, why not give it to dear Ella? If it's quite all right, Jean-Michel, I, I would love to look at your book of how other countries live. All right, Ella, here, you can take it. I shall go my own way and live my own life, for I am an owner. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming with me, right? Of course. Good. <laughs> Cinderella, 
Get in there and clean the kitchen. I've just finished it. Then prepare the dinner. It's on the stove. Then the bed butter. So turn down and your bed clothing is all laid out. Well. <coughs> Where did you get that book? Jean-Michel just gave it to me. Oh, so nice people still give you things to daddy's little girl. And what's this doing here? That's my father's coat. <laughs> that is rags. It's all I have to remember. These rags now! Clean the porch with these rags! <laughs> I'm as mild and as meek as a mouse. When I hear a command, I obey. But I know of a spot in my house where no one can stand in my way. In my own little corner, in my own little chair, I can be whatever I want to be.
of the Lord's and treating me with what? 105 requests. It seems a lot. I'll take this. <clears throat> your Majestic Highness, in honor of your upcoming coronation, we proudly proclaim your kingdom to be a land of plenty and bounty. And <clears throat> may I have the imprimatur of your ring on this other announcement? Right. Sorry, I forgot. What's it for? Oh, it's complicated. Do you really want me to get into it? Prince Christopher, you must listen! What was that? You must take responsibility for Who? your actions! Who's that yelling from the other side of the moat? The people are being treated unfairly by your government! He seems upset. A rabble rouser. Ignore him. I have this new law which forbids any... Actually, if you let me have the ring, it would save the trip. Shouldn't we listen to what he has to say? People were never upset at mom and dad, were they? Your parents had the good fortune of being royalty in a time of plenty. But ever since their unfortunate demise, I have done my best to run this kingdom. I've done my best to send you to the finest of schools. Unfortunate demise, if they only knew. Hello, I'm talking here! <laughs> we should invite him up for a talk. Ignore him. He's just some crazy revolutionary. I make trouble. But boy, he's got one loud voice on him. I will not give up! If you will not listen, I shall shout this to the town square! Shout this to the town square. It's time for a distraction. What kind of distraction? A royal wedding. Wow. Does that work? Like a dream. Every time. But... Who's going to get married? <laughs> well, you. <laughs> That's just silly. I don't know any girls. I went to an all-boys school out in the woods. And then attended an all-male university. On an island. Why did you do that to me? <laughs> For this happy day. I am going to find you a bride. Oh, happy the day. This is nonsense. How are you going to find me a bride? A bride, a bride, a bride, a bride. We shall have a magnificent ball dancing. What? Every eligible young woman who can afford a dress will attend. Now there's a wonderful selection process right there. If you can't afford a nice ball gown, you have no business marrying a prince. Now, you will dance with every girl. All the guests will be in masks. At the stroke of midnight, everyone will remove their masks, and you will have found a bride. That's fast. King and queen on the throne, I'm there to guide you through all your decisions. It's really a win-win. How is any woman going to fall in love with me so quickly? A valid question, sire, which we will answer in due time now, Lord Finkelman. Oh, it's, it's Lord Pinkleton, sir. Whatever. I want you to tell this to all. A pronouncement. An announcement. <laughs> His Royal Highness, Christopher Rupert. Please, don't say my whole name. Vladimir, Vladimir, Alexander, Alexander, Francois Reginald, Lancelot Herman. Herman? Herman. Gregory James is giving a ball. Sebastian, dancing, can we talk about this, please? Silver 
a ball. A ball, and that's not all. The prince is getting a ball. The prince is getting a ball. Hear ye, hear ye, his royal highness, Christopher Rupert James is giving a ball. He's giving a ball. The prince is giving a ball. The prince is giving a ball. The prince is giving a ball. And now I'm talking here. Oh. Now is the time, the time to act. He's giving a ball. Vladimir, Carl Alexander, Francois Reginald, Lancelot Herman, 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 Gregory James is giving a ball. The prince is giving a what? The prince is giving a ball. The prince is giving a ball. His Majesty has this free to attend the ball. All one requires is an invitation and fashionable attire, and the prince shall choose one woman from the ball to become his bride. That means anyone can be the queen! <laughs>
Balloons courses. Ah, I can see balloons! <laughs> Gee, I wonder if I can serve the ball. Mama, isn't my dress the nicest? Oh, Abigail, we must move on to Gabrielle's hair. It's beginning to look, I fear, like a sparrow's nest. <laughs> And her name is Ella. So I call her Cinderella. <laughs> Why don't I have any friends? <laughs> hey, Cinderella. You are well versed in the art of ridicule. I do have a flair for it, don't I, actual daughter? Watch it learn. Cinderella, quickly now, get dressed, get ready for the ball. You're going to find a husband. Am I? Ridicule. Who caught it? I did. Me too, me too. What's ridicule? That's terrible. Who could that be at this hour? Everyone, get out while I deal with this imbecile. Cinderella, get that dress on Charlotte. What brand of idiot would... Why, Sebastian, what an unexpected delight. Madame, I have but a moment. I invite you to hang upon my every word. Invitation accepted. Tonight's ball shall be in masks. The prince will be wearing a white mask. What color mask will your daughter Gabrielle be wearing? Why pink? Well, if the daughter is anything like the mother, I think that the pink mask and the white mask shall meet and fall in love. Am I picking up what you're putting down? Your daughter is all part of my master plan. You are a genius! You are perceptive. <laughs> I shall see you tonight at the ball. Together we shall make it so.
I married your father for love. He died and I cried. Ah, but then I married Cinderella's father for money. He died. I got a house. That, my dear, is the true meaning of love. <laughs> in the bouquet was a wild rose. This thorn has scratched my lip. Yes, I am bleeding. Perhaps I should walk up to the prince and scratch his lip. Oh, no. Make him drink a lemonade or that would sting. That's just cruel. Enough of taking things as they are. Now is the time for all of us, the peasants, the tradespeople, everyone, to march up to the palace, go to the prince and get him to listen. Instead of having his Fancy ball. You should do that. You should march up to the prince and talk to him. Oh, well, listen to me. He uses his castle to hide from the truth. Him meeting with me would never happen. The only thing funnier would be you going to the ball. Why don't you just do that? Why don't you just go to the ball, march up to the prince and ask him? Ask him when he's going to notice. Notice that people are being evicted from their own homes and lands. I. It's absolutely absurd. I could do that, Jean Michel. I could go to the prince and he might listen to me. And if I had a ball gown, I think I might look sort of nice. I am in the royal palace of all places when I meet the finest prince you've ever seen. And the color on my three stepsisters' faces is a queer. Of a fool 
foolish dream. I am being foolish. Well, then be foolish with me. What would you dream of? Why, an invitation to the ball, I guess. Right here. Here's an invitation. What? <laughs> but it's torn. Don't wait for everything to be perfect. Just go. What else would you dream of? Why, a white gown, I'd imagine. A beautiful white gown sewn up with pearls and jewels and a tiara of diamonds. And on your feet? What, the most beautiful grow grain pumps I'd imagine? No, no, better. The Venetian glass your stepmother so loves and her trinkets and baubles and an entire pair of shoes <laughs> made only of Venetian glass. <laughs> oh, how silly. Oh, I'd be the envy of all. But um, how would I get to the ball? Oh, uh, well, you see that pumpkin over there? Yes. I'll turn it into a golden carriage. <laughs> Now remember, my dear, all this magic is 
very powerful, but it ends at midnight. Yes. Now go. Go in the name of every girl who has ever wanted to go to a ball in a beautiful dress. Go in the name of every girl who has wanted to change the world she lived in. Go with a promise of possibility. <laughs> Anymore. 
I'm sorry. such as you in our court. Thank you. And it's an honor to be in this wonderful party you're throwing. It's like every time they speak, a part of me dies. Amen. <laughs> this room is filled with some of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. Oh. <laughs> I saw the vanilla cake in the buffet. I love vanilla cake. Thank you, Trevorita. This court is alive with laughter and warmth, just like during the reign of Prince Christopher's parents. <laughs> May his reign be a continuation of theirs. Oh, those were glorious days. Oh, that's so amazing. Look at these Yes. Oh, you are so kind. Thank you. You make me wish I were a better person. But there's something somewhat familiar about you. I, I wonder what that could be. I admire how you've changed everything around. And yet, I feel so comfortable with you. I feel as if I've met you before. Ten minutes ago I saw you I looked up when you came through the door My head started reeling You gave me the feeling The room had no ceiling or floor Ten minutes ago I met you 
And we murmured our how do you do? I wanted to ring out the bells and fling out my arms and to sing out the news. I have found her, she's an angel with the dust of the stars in her eyes. We are dancing, we are flying, and she's taking me back to the skies. In the arms of my love, I'm flying over mountain and meadow and land. And I like it so well that for all I can tell, I may never come down again. I'm sorry to be so abusive. I've just met you. I'm not usually this way with someone I just met. Events like this, I just feel like, oh, what am I even doing here? Me too. Like such a phony. So do I. You do? Yes. Me too. My name is... Christopher. Yes, I know. Have we met before? Yes. And we are seeing each other for the first time right now. Ten minutes ago, I met you. And we murmured our how do you do. I
the golden carriage. After her! Madame, we shall take your carriage. But we have in the room. Leave your daughters behind them. After her, she is my destiny. <laughs> now, seriously? What just happened? Seriously? Why would a fellow want a girl like her? A frail and fluffy beauty. Why can't a fellow ever once prefer a solid girl like her? She's a frothy little boy.
was tall, very tall, and his eyes were clear and blue. He was slim, very slim, in his coat of snowy hue. When he walked across the ballroom floor, he was like a thing divine. And all the ladies turned their heads, and naturally I turned mine. The chandeliers were shooting stars, the drums and horns and soft guitars. We're sounding more like nightingales The window curtains blew like sails And I was floating just above the floor Feeling slightly taller than before He was tall When I left this house in my carriage, I was quite convinced that my daughter was to be queen and I would never have to come back here to this. And well, here I am. Back to this. Was the ball a disappointment, madame? The prince, despite his being well born and raised with great care by our Lord Protector, showed the most appalling manners. Appalling! He spent the entire evening dancing talking with some little no one. How did Gabrielle and Charlotte take that? Oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <coughs> Look, this is fun. I had over heels for someone else. If he gives this up, I may not want to go out with him. What's going on in his royal highness's thick skull? And the way he looked at her, with respect, I hope no one ever looks at me that way. And if that girl had any sense of morality or idea of what is right in the world, she would not have appeared at the ball at all. But can you imagine how she must have felt tonight, arriving at the ball and meeting the man of her dreams? I cannot, for my mind has no place for the puerile or rank. I can imagine it, I think. Me too. So dreamy. Shut up, Abigail. I can imagine it. I can imagine it. And I have no imagination. on the highway when you're driving through the moonlight to the dance you are breathless with a wild anticipation of adventure and excitement and romance then at last you see the towers of the palace silhouetted on the sky above the park and below them is a row of lighted windows like a lovely diamond necklace in the dark So I only just suppose, I suppose that when you come to the ballroom and the room itself is floating in the air, if you're suddenly confronted by his highness, you are frozen like a statue on the stair. You're afraid to hear the way your heart is beating, and you know you must have made the best of seriously thinking of retreating, then you seem to hear him asking you to dance. You make a bow, a timid bow, and shyly answer yes. How would you know that this is so? I do
night, a lovely night, a final night you know you'll never see. You meet your prince, a charming prince, as charming as a prince will ever be. The stars in the hazy heaven tremble above you while he is whispering, darling, I love you. You say goodbye, away you fly, but on your all your life you'll dream of this lovely, lovely night. Charlotte, your turn. Okay. But it's not gonna be good. <laughs> a lovely night, a lovely night. A finer night you know you'll never see. La 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 la. You meet, you meet your prince, your prince, a charming, a charming prince, as charming as a prince will ever be.
seems to imply she has a police record. <laughs> the second she runs off, you don't dance with any of the other girls. Sebastian, are there poor people in the kingdom who have had their land taken away from them? If there were, I would tell you. Do they need our help? <laughs> Everyone donated joyfully. Ignore this talk. Where did you hear it? The girl! I don't know that she's to be trusted. Please, sire, let's go back to the castle. The work is piling up. No, no, something isn't right. <clears throat> As you say, sire, uh, the ring, please. <clears throat> right, I forgot. What are you stamping this time? Uh, nothing, sire. Uh, hardly worth troubling your beautiful mind. Let me read it. <laughs> sire, I should explain before. I'll read it on my own. Sire, allow me to go back to the palace and draw up some coverage that you don't want to just... I'm get... reading this now, <laughs> but... thank you. That would be all, Sebastian. I'll ask if I need anything explained. Oh, no. Sebastian! <laughs> Sire, I can explain How everything... can you do this in my name? I... And maintaining this life for you. If it weren't for my watchful eye, you should be a pauper. Would you like that? I want that girl. The one that talked to me at the ball. I want to talk to that girl. A troublemaker. We're having another ball. A banquet. And she will come to that. She won't show. This is lunacy. She will come. We are having a banquet tonight, and you are inviting everyone in the kingdom. Don't forget who you're talking to. And you don't forget who you're talking to. Now, we're having a banquet tonight, and I am finding that girl. Very well, sire. She won't come. You don't even know her name. And if she really thought that you were worthy of her high ideals, <laughs> she wanted to run off now, would she? Banquet! 
So spread the word throughout the land. The prince is giving a banquet. It is his wish that the girl he met at the ball will attend. And as for the rest of us, well, what can I say? There's gonna be a ham. Talk it back to me. Of course, I want to keep a watchful eye on all the women that are going to be there. I'm not giving up control this time. Spread the ride! Hear me! Hear me! His royal highness is a giving a banquet tonight! Invitation only! A banquet? Tonight? Cinderella, where are you? Cinderella, where can you be? His Highness do this. Two significant social events in one week. Now, granted, I have never looked lovely. <laughs> but that physical perfection comes at a price! <clears throat> gloves, yes, that's what it was. Cinderella, where are my gloves? Your gloves are oh, Ella over here. Don't tell her you have the gloves just yet. Yes, I know she'll be abusive later, but trust me, this shall be worth it. I'm going to tell the dad that I'm sick. Uh, would you like some? No, I'm not actually sick. It's just like when Charlotte was in school and she pretended to be sick to get out of things she didn't like, like a third and fourth grade. <laughs> so, I will be sick just as we are leaving for the carriage. Madame and the girls will go without me, and then I will change back into my regular clothes and meet my secret crush, Jean-Michel. I'm taking him up on his offer to go help in a soup kitchen. A soup kitchen? I get a ladle! You heard me. And guess what will happen to this beautiful gown and invitation? I will lend them both to you. You shall go in my stead and meet the prince and fall in love and get married and exact revenge on madame and try to keep Jean-Michel out of stockades. True la, true la. Say your I can't find my gloves. And don't worry about madame. She never notices anything that isn't her. Your gloves are here, madame. Why didn't you tell me you had them, you foolish child? Charlotte, I'm going to quickly now. And those shoes are delicate and dainty. about the feet of all the men he danced with. Shut up, Abigail! Now, now, ladies, to the carriage. Oh, madame, my stomach. I must have eaten something this morning that disagrees with me. No, no, this cannot prevent me from going to the banquet tonight. No, you go take and take Charlotte and Abigail. Let Charlotte meet the prince and steal him from the homely girl from the ball. Go, let Charlotte be queen. I think I can make that work. But mama, mama, what about me? What about you, Abigail? I suppose I shall have to go this battle alone and with only half of my troops. And the lesser half, if you ask me. <laughs> Cinderella, send for the physician. If Gabrielle is feeling better, you send her to the castle immediately. Gabrielle, feel better soon. I insist on it. Keep your invitation. Thank you, Mama. I'll come if I feel better. Not the dress! Not the dress! <laughs> Lady is the carriage. <laughs> Shh, now quickly, I'll get changed, and you, you knock on the door. It knocked back! Then open it! Oh, hello, Ella. I am tired of hiding in the shadows like a fearful person. Would you rather see Madame? I think he's good. How are you this evening? Oh, Gabrielle and I are going out tonight, and I'm wound up like a clock. <laughs> Tonight, she and I will go to the green grocer and beg him for whatever scraps he may have. And then we shall slave over a hot stove and serve a meal to the very poorest. Ah. I do hope she's not expecting that much fun every night. Hello, Tony Shell. Oh, Gabrielle! I much prefer you in this simple attire. You don't look almost like a carnival attraction. You speak such kind words to me all the day long. And uh, what is the soup kitchen this oh, evening? Well, our first priority is to the poor. Uh, but as soon as we're done, we shall march up to the palace and I shall speak to the prince directly. We only have one thing to worry about. What's that? That he will even speak to me. Well, perhaps Ella can help with that. You know she's talked to the prince. What? Ella has spoken to the prince? She was at the ball. They were talking about the kingdom and how to make things better, and tonight she's going to the banquet. Oh, 
My world is upside down. But do you know what this means? If Ella can speak to the prince, that means I can speak to the prince. And they'll be open to my thoughts and my ideas. What do you call this feeling that I have? Optimism. Optimism, yes, yes. I have to do this more often. You can march up to the prince and talk to him. I can march up to the prince and talk to him. You can be a leader. I can be a leader. You can be my boyfriend. I can be a boy. Whoa, whoa.
remember, the magic has gone at midnight. Yes, the magic is gone at midnight. Anything else? Well, your glass slippers are already on your feet. Oh, and the book that Jean-Michel gave you about the world. Now you only have the entire world to help you. Now you can go wherever you want to go. I... that is... we... 
These people have had their homes and their lands taken from them. I've said this before, but now I truly understand what it's like to have someone you love lose their home. We need your help. We need to have our voices heard. Yes, I see. And trust me, I do know what it's like to be overlooked. I want to help you, but how? Now you only have the entire world to help you. Of course, it's here. What's here? Do you know it? I read it at university. Look. Chapter two. Chapter two? Of course, chapter two. I hadn't gotten that far. <laughs> yes, chapter two. I should have known. People, I think I have a plan. I knew you would. Bong live Prince Christopher, uh, our future king. Huzzah! 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 Prince Christopher, what are you doing surrounded by all these ragamuffins? Sebastian, you said no one needed our help. But what do you call these people? Mm -hmm. Judging by their attire, artists, I assume. <laughs> We demand to have our voices heard. A beheading would not be out of place here. People should have their voices heard. That's a very good idea. What, what is going on? But now is the time for all to be seen and heard. It's in this book. In one month, let's all vote for a new job that I shall create. The post of the prime minister. Someone who will counsel me. I nominate our current Lord Protector, Sebastian. Yeah. I am unworthy, sire. And I also nominate this man, Jean-Michel. What? what? Let the people decide the way things are or the way things could be. And everyone, rich or poor, only gets one vote. One person, one vote? What is the fun in that? <laughs> people, in one month, I give you an election! <laughs> Good idea. And everyone, rich and poor, is invited into the castle for a free banquet. Oh. You did it. I knew you could. I did do it. And I think I know who I am now. You're smiling. I I've seen you smile before, but never like that. I think I know the kind of king I can be. Just, fair, kind-hearted. I found myself and you showed me the way. You seem so sure of yourself. So sure of everything. I feel I can answer any question that gets thrown at me. You can. With you, I can. There's only one question that I don't have the answer for. Do I love you because you're beautiful? Or are you beautiful because I love you? And I see in you a girl too lovely to be really true. Do I want to because you're wonderful? Or are you wonderful because I want you? Are you the sweet invention of a lover's dream?
promise you never want me. Don't leave me. I must go. shall hold his first free election for Prime Minister of the Land. The candidates, of course, are our current Lord Protector Sebastian and John Michel. Also, all eligible women, please come on down to the town square to try on that glass slipper. Boy, the prince has been looking for that woman for a long time. All he wants is that they find each other and get off on the right foot. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, this is... This is the longest news cycle and the most exciting that I think I've ever shouted ever. <sighs> I'll be back at 11 for weather and sports. <laughs> Shoe, the shoe fits! It is you. 
the one that danced with me at the ball and sold me my own kingdom and offered me water that day I was thirsty. Please, don't run away again. I don't think I could handle it. It was you! Oh no. I, I have been abominable. I have been terrible. I have been awful beyond compare. I am unworthy of your famous kindness and mercy. Madame, you have treated me very poorly indeed. And I only have three words for you. I forgive you. What? Oh, oh thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I swear from now. Oh, for you, Charlotte, surely it's many months of community service. And what about me, Mama? Oh, oh, shut up, Abigail! <laughs> You're amazing. Can I maybe learn your name now? Cinderella. Cinderella? It's beautiful. It's a name I once hated, but starting today I'll keep, so that from now on, whenever someone thinks something is impossible, They'll just say my name and know better. I love you so much, Cinderella. I don't know what to do. Well, is marriage still on the table? <laughs> yes, yes, of course. You have to marry me. I mean, will you marry me, Cinderella? Oh, wait. Yeah. Will you marry me, Cinderella? Yes, my handsome prince, I will marry you.
about the rest of you, but those of us on the stage are thinking two things right now. One, why couldn't we have had an audience like you every single night? And two, all of the women up here are thinking, thank God we get to go back to wearing normal clothes again. Okay, whatever. All right, so those of you who have been here before know the drill. We have people that need to be acknowledged for this amazing show that we've managed to wrap up. Amazing nine shows in a year that I, a lot of people didn't think it was gonna happen. So first we need to acknowledge some people. First and foremost, we need to thank the people here at Beit Hillel, including Ms. Khali Barakets. Um, let's see. After that, we need to thank our amazing sales coordinator and the website that helped us to, to put up put up the ticket reservations, Miss Revital Benisti and Funny Jerry. We need to thank um, for our amazing sets, which you see behind you. Uh, it was not done alone, as amazing as he is, both on stage and both with his artwork, it was not done alone. He had help. Um, we need to thank our amazing set designer, Mr. Juby Hart. <laughs> and we need to thank the people that helped him with painting the sets. Kim Glassman, Aviva Sokowitz, Richard Gray, Abigail Fox, and Zachary Monteleone. Um, as you can see, all of the costumes here are really quite beautiful, but what you haven't seen is that they're absolutely hell to get in and out of. Um, so we need to thank a few people as far as that's concerned. We need to thank, um, Shira Kaplan and Trumpledore Vintage. We need to thank Miss Daphne Peretz, who did the, uh, the costume design for a lot of the guys up here. and Nav Levy for designing all of the special dresses that you see. We need to thank our dressers from backstage who helped the women to get in and out of their dresses. Kyle Weintraub, Sarah Gray, and Tommy Hammer. We need to thank the people who helped us with makeup, as far as that's concerned. Tanya Hammer, Gula Atlas, Leia Stern, Dina Davies, and Abigail Fox. We need to thank Karen Feldman for filming this show. And we also need to thank Marna, who took many pictures of us during our uh, dress rehearsals in these amazing costumes, and she was responsible for the pictures you saw in the lobby. We need to thank two amazing people who were responsible for props, who were responsible for speaking to the people up there, who were responsible for basically um, staying calm in the middle of a hurricane. We need to thank Ilana Bloomsack and Jen Fleischer. <laughs> truly, truly amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, and uh, Jen Fleischer is also assistant to the director. <laughs> choreographer who worked with us, who truly worked hard with us in order to get all of the dances just right, Adina Feldman. <laughs> of course, we need to thank the man that we lovingly refer to as God. Please don't applaud until you hear his actual name, and some people have done that. <laughs> We need to thank such an amazing guy. He loves us and he loves our shows, I hope. Um, we hope he'll come back for many, 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 many more. The, the official lighting and sound technician of Jerusalem, Ru Ruvay Lightfish. <laughs> okay, we need to thank our band. Stop 
Massimo, congratulations, now you can never leave. You're stuck with us forever. We'll see you next year, hopefully. We need to thank a woman who has put up with a very stupid joke for a very long time. And we're grateful that she keeps coming back despite that joke. We love her, we love her music, and we hope she loves us in return. Esther von der Linden. We need to thank our musical director who worked like crazy to get the music right, to get the harmonies right, and thank you so much for playing one of my songs from Les Mis during the wall, during the ball. <laughs> Mr. Chaim Tukachinsky. <laughs> We come down to one last person. I think of him as a grumpy teddy bear. <laughs> he has described himself, and these are his words, not mine, he has described himself as a raving maniac, whereas I'm just a well-mannered, dignified maniac. By the way, does a feeling of dread ever creep over you when I get to this part of the acknowledgments? Oh good, then I'm doing something right. Okay. It's time to get serious. For a thousand and one reasons that most of you will probably never know about, this has been a difficult process and a difficult production and a difficult year for all of us in the cast and crew. And I felt that since he's the one who writes the Dvar Torah, for every show, I thought, yeah, you can clap, there's one. <laughs> I, started clapping. I thought that it would be appropriate to read something that I wrote a few months back um, in August for an art exhibition that I took part in. And I think it very accurately describes the way we feel towards him, the way he feels towards us, and the way we all feel towards this workshop. And uh, as soon as I'm done, or as soon as we're done hug, giving hugs and everything, everybody in the cast and crew gets a copy of this, whoever wants. If there's any left, come up to me. I'm willing to give one. All right, this is a piece that I wrote. It's called Losing Family. Don't let the title fool you. Losing family obliges us to find our family. Perhaps not always the family that is our blood, but the family that can become our blood. And should we have the wisdom and the patience to open our door to this new family, we may realize that the thing we wanted and were searching for for so long was staring us in the face the whole time, and we never even knew it. Our blood family is certainly capable of being loving and generous in various ways, but they are not always capable of understanding or empathizing with our situation. The father, who tries to teach us and guide us on the right path, can often be impatient and stubborn in his conviction that he is right. The mother, who tries to help and nurture, cannot always see when she is holding on too tightly and that her idea of help may not match with the intention or the reality. Incidentally, a common trait among many parents is the tendency to overreact and jump to conclusions about their children's behavior or actions. The brother that we enjoy playing with as children can now seem distanced for reasons unknown. The sister with whom we may want to build a better relationship can often seem unreachable due to conflict of interests and personalities. All of this is unintentional, but when we realize that our blood family cannot give us what we need, we can become disillusioned and even ashamed. Our dreams can seem out of reach and our hopes diminished without empathy from the people we wanted to come from most. There are some in this world who never fully recover from this rude awakening. But that does not mean that all hope is lost. There are others in our lives whom we may have overlooked that can give us what we want, what we need to raise our hopes and get our dreams back on track. Whether it's the song we want to sing or the story we want to tell, there are always those who can help us to find our voice. They are the ones who can, at the very least, listen and encourage and, of course, empathize. They are the family that can become our blood, and we must never take them for granted. But it is of the utmost importance that we learn where and how to look and when and how to ask. Patience, sympathy, empathy, sensitivity, a good ear for listening, and the right kind of communication. These are not just tips for people to take or leave. 
They are essential tools for strengthening existing relationships and building new ones, and unlike what some people may believe, they apply to both sides of the, situ of the relationship. No relationship of any kind will ever be perfect. Humans do not live within the vacuum of sterility, nor should they. So from time to time, it's only natural to look back and say, I wish I had done this, or I wish I had said that. But I find that as I write these words, a powerful realization occurs to me, and I hope that it does for all of you one day as well. The two greatest gifts that can be given in this life are the gift of a good heart and the gift of friendship. much to our beloved director, Michael Burrow. Thank you. 